Good. Take your Bible, turn with me to the book of Acts chapter number 24. Acts chapter number 24. And as you're turning there, uh, I want to say, man, what a great Sunday we had last week, Harvest Sunday. Boy, a good spirit and Sunday afternoon, dinner on the grounds, good turnout, the hard work that went into all the games and well, we had so much going on. It was just a blessing. And then the church service, praise the Lord, a glorious church service on Sunday night. It brought me back to memories of last year at this time, 2020, Harvest Sunday. And if you remember, at the end of Harvest Sunday, we started to notice people getting sick. And uh, boy, it went rampant throughout our church and people getting sick. And, sick. and we went out to uh, have outdoor services after that for the month of December where we had services in the parking lot. And you see the picture right there, brings back a flood of memories and uh, for the whole month of December. And boy, we had some glorious parking lot services. I remember early, I believe last year, we had a parking lot service in the rain. Brother Jay Hudson, your children were singing to the glory of God as it poured down rain on that dark Wednesday night. And uh, it was an amazing, amazing service that I will never forget. And before you show the next picture, Brother Andy, those parking lot services, we then went to dual services where we had church inside and we continued services outside. And we begin to pray, Lord, when would you have us all come together for church inside? We ask God, show us, let it lead us, direct us, help us figure this all out. I remember I was out over at my house right across the street over there and a neighbor came by and said, hey, your, your little pavilion thing, it just blew over. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you very, very much like that. When I think blow over, I think just blow over. And then another neighbor came by and he says, whoa, a whirlwind or something hit your pavilion. I said, a whirlwind, yeah. And so then I drove over here and in the parking lot there, this thing was like destroyed. And I said, holy mackerel, something happened to that thing. And so I talked to Joseph. Joseph uh, went to our recorder. We had a, a security camera that's pointed out that direction. And I looked at that. It was like a, a whirlwind came out of the sky, directed on that thing, and blew up. I mean, it just blew up. Now, when I think about that, if I tell you that that pavilion thing, a whirlwind came and hit it and blew it up, you would say, I don't know about that, Pastor. That seems like a slight exaggeration. You'd almost say that, I'm deviating from the truth, but it's true. It happened like that. The security camera showed that thing come out and this thing went boom. And you know, it sounds far-fetched, but it happened. Now, here, here's the video camera of that. I wouldn't have believed it had I not seen it. And it, if you slow it down there, now you're not gonna be able to slow it down, Brother Andy, but that thing, if you slowed it down, it's like there was a little thing that came and it zapped and it was like the Lord did that. Now, I tell that story without seeing that, you're like, come on, Pastor, it didn't really happen. But it's the truth. It's not heresy, it's the truth. Here in Acts chapter 24, the Apostle Paul, he, he went to Jerusalem Boy, well, he went to the temple. The Jewish people caught him in the temple and began to accuse him of, of strife. And so they began to almost pull uh, Paul apart into pieces. There was such an uproar in the city of Jerusalem. The soldiers came and took him away from the Jews. And if you remember, Paul, as he's going into the castle, he stops and he begins to give his testimony to the Jewish people. At the end of the testimony, they put him into prison. There's still an uproar they send him down to the city of Caesarea. There's such an uproar in the city, they had to get him out of the city. They sent him down to Caesarea. And here in Acts chapter 24, as you begin to read this, oh my, the Jewish people, they send the, the high priest comes, they have a hired man named Tertullus, who's an orator, and he's gonna come down and they're gonna go to the governor, Governor Felix, and they're gonna begin to tell the governor, this is what the apostle Paul did, this is what he did. And they begin to give this great or, or, oration, this great speech about how bad the apostle Paul is. At the very end of the speech, Paul, or Felix, Governor Felix, looks over to the apostle Paul and he says, what do you have to say about what they said? 
give us your side of the story here. What we're going to do is we're going to read Paul's side of the story here this morning. If you'll stand with me for the reading of God's word, we're going to read verses 10 through 14. Here's how we'll do this. I'll read verses 10, 11, 12, 13, then we'll all read together verse 14. So starting in verse 10, follow along with me. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. And they found, uh, they neither found in, they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. Now, stop real quick. Do you see, he's, he's talking to the, the governor. He says, they're accusing me a lot of things. It didn't happen the way that they're saying it happened. I didn't do it that way. They can't prove what they're saying. Do you understand? He's giving a defense. Do we see that? Do we see that? Now read verse number 14 with me together. Ready? But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Oh, did you see that? He says, hey, after the way which they call heresy, Hey, some call what I believe heresy, but in the end he says, I, but, I, but, but it is the truth. Some call it heresy, but I believe the Bible and it is true. And that's the, the title of this morning. And here, here's the point. Some people would call you and me as Bible believers that we believe heresy. But in reality, we believe the truth. We have the truth. The, thy word is truth. And praise God for the apostle Paul it's not that he didn't like the Jewish people. He loved the high priest. He loved the Jewish people. But he wasn't going to be persuaded by the Jews to change from the truth. It doesn't matter what everybody else say. You can call it heresy, but it is the truth. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We do thank you, Lord, for today. It's a glorious day. And I am thankful for a group of people and a lot of people here this morning that are interested in the truth. Lord, I pray that you help us to realize that there's pressure on all of us. Sometimes it's from family, sometimes it's from friends, sometimes it's from even a, a way that we believed in the past. But in the end, I pray that you help us to not bow down to the pressure of people, but to stick with the truth of your word. Lord, I also pray if there's a soul here this morning that's never been saved, that they would realize their only hope is you, Jesus. Please bless the service. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Some call it heresy, but it is the truth. I was talking to Brother Andy, Mrs. Hancock. Your husband was telling me a story. And uh, they got out, and uh, you know, with a big family that they have, they recently got out, and he took you to dinner. And uh, by the way, not just, two pl not just one place, he took you to two places. And praise the Lord for that. Then he even got you a place where you could stay for a night. And he told me he got you this fancy place, and he was describing the events and all that. Well, I said, well, how was it? And all of a sudden he said, well, it was great except for the pigeons. Now it caught me off guard. What do you mean it was great except for the pigeons? And he said, well, when we got to the place where we were staying, it had a metal roof and these pigeons would come, land on the metal roof and with the wind blowing, the pigeon would slide down the metal roof until they got to the edge and they'd fly off. And he said, the problem was is they tried with their claws to hold on to the metal roof. And he said, all night long, it was like that screech down there. And I sort of looked at him and I said, you know, I don't know if that's true, but he basically said to me, Pastor, you may not believe me, but it's true. That's similar to the story here. Paul uh, listens to this group of Jewish people. And you know, Annas the high priest, he descended with the elders with a certain orator named Tertullus. And so the high priest wanted to make a case. And so they went searching for an orator, somebody who could speak in an eloquent way, who could make sense of things, who was a, a very persuasive type of person. He said, we need Tertullus. He can, he can uh, really convince Governor Felix about how bad this apostle Paul. And so they brought Tertullus and uh, 
Governor Felix says to him, go ahead, tell us your side of the story. And boy, you can see Tertullus as he waxed elegant and he looked over to Felix and he said, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness, notwithstanding we have a problem, I pray thee that you would just hear us nice, wonderful Jewish people who never cause any problems. But with, and then he begins to attack the Apostle Paul. He's a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He's a mover of sedition. He's a pestilent fella. He went about to profane the temple. And we would have just taken him and judged him according to our law. But your vicious, uh, rotten soldiers came and stopped it all. And at the end of it, look with me at verse number nine. You, you see Tertullus, he has all these Jewish people, and he says, and the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. The Jewish people are listening to Tertullus waxing elegant, and you can see the Jewish people, they're like, we agree with everything he says. And behind the scenes, he's waxing elegant, and the Jews are surrounded, Felix, this is, and it's a big show trying to convince Felix, Governor Felix, the, to let them have Paul. By the way, the Jewish people wanted to have Paul so they could kill him. And we see this. So Felix, at the very end of it, turns over to the Apostle Paul and says, well, what do you have to say? And as we read before, I want you to just see it again. Look at verse 24 and the way it's worded right here in verse number 24. And it says uh, in verse, no, 14, not 24. You do what I say, not what, do what I mean, not what I say. Okay. Verse 14, but this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, they call, they, the Jewish people call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. The apostle Paul begins to say, hey, they call it heresy, heresy, heresy. What, is, what does heresy mean, by the way? That word heresy, the word heresy is a, a word that means a fundamental error in religion. We would look at it as something that is fundamentally against the word of God, something that deviates from the word of God. Hey, they call it heresy. They're saying that I am deviating from the word of God. He said, they, they're calling me a heretic. They're calling me somebody who is deviating from the word of God. I didn't deviate from the word of God. By the way, the word heresy is found four times basically in the Bible, starting in Acts chapter number 24, it's found where Paul is telling them they call me, a, uh, they, they, they call heresy. It's also found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. The apostle Paul writing to the church of Corinth says, for there must be also heresies among you. Do you remember the church there in Corinth was a divided church? And Paul's saying, hey, obviously the way you guys are acting, some of you are deviating from the word of God. By the way, is deviating from the word of God, is that good? No, the, the word of God is truth. So deviating from the word of God, getting away from the Bible, even if you have a partial port, port of the word of God, but you uh, go away from it just a little bit, that's wrong, that's heresy. Do you remember in the Garden of Eden, uh, Satan came and said, hath God said, and then twisted God's word just a little bit, that's called heresy because they're deviating from the word of God. It's also found in Galatians chapter number five. You, you know Galatians chapter five, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, and it begins to, to list the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, uh, strife, seditions, then it lists the word heresies. When you're not walking in the spirit, but you're walking after flesh, you begin to deviate or go away from the word of God. You begin to commit what we would call heresy, going away from the word of God. First Peter says it like this in chapter two, verse one. For there, but there are, were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who bring, through privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon them swift destructions. And Second Peter's talking about people who deviate from the word of God. They go away from the word of God. They may have a little bit of it. They may have a tinge of the word of God. They may use some biblical words, but they begin to deviate and go against the word of God. And when you go against the word of God, even a smidgen, it's called 
heresy. Heresy is a fundamental error in your belief. It's an error of opinion respecting some fundamental doctrine or belief system. Okay, for example, yesterday we had a good group of people go out to Hampton to try to help the, the uh, Peninsula Baptist Church. Me and my family went over to that laundromat. We got the dry towels in the uh, dryer going and it opened up doors of opportunity to talk to a lot of people, invite them to the church. And there was this man sitting there and his name was Tim. I remember his middle name is Matthew, Tim Matthew. And I began to talk to him and I began to give him my testimony. And I began to say to him about how I was invited to church. I grew up born into a Catholic family. I went to a Nazarene church and then I went to a, 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 a community church and then a Baptist church and then went to no church altogether. Then I told him what changed my life is somebody asked me that question. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? And I talked about how Jesus saved me. In the end, he started laughing. He said, well, you went uh, the opposite direction from me. You went from Catholic all of a sudden to uh, becoming a born-again, Bible-believing Baptist. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I went from that end into being a Catholic. And I said, well, how did that happen? He said, well, I had to become a Catholic because if I wasn't a Catholic, I couldn't marry my wife. And so for him, his religion was not based on what is true. That was like second fiddle to him. His religion was based on, because I'm gonna marry her, I need to become a Catholic, so that doesn't matter, I'll just become a Catholic. By the way, it's, that's not an attack on Catholicism, but, it, but we have to understand, we, we are people of the truth. Paul's like this, he says, I know the pressure of the Jewish people. I was in their same position before. I understand where they're coming from, but in reality, they're not interested in the truth. They're calling me a heresy. I'm more interested in not being free. I'm not interested in making people happy. I'm interested in what is true. I'm not practicing heresy because I'm not deviating from the word of God. I believe the Bible is true. Some will call it heresy, but it's the truth. By the way, here we go. Do you know why you believe what you believe? Okay, and that, that's very important. We believe the Bible. It's very, very, very important. That's fundamentally important for us. We believe the word of God is, is we believe the word of God is the word of God. Amen. We believe the Bible. So the Bible is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. The, thy word is truth. It's, a, it's a, a, like a two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It's quick and powerful. The Bible is his word. It guides us and directs us. Do you know, if, if, would, would you recognize heresy, when I say heresy, would you recognize it if somebody's deviating from the Bible? Would you recognize heresy if you saw it? Uh, would you recognize a fundamental error in your beliefs? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you a story. We've seen, me and Mandy, where are you at Mandy? I've been seeing these signs all over town for years for a, a play, I didn't know much about it, called Shin Yun. Has anybody ever seen those posters? Right, Shen Yun, a couple of you. How many of you? Like two of you? Okay. They're everywhere. They're all over the place. So I said, boy, oh boy, I, I think I'm going to take my wife out to Shen Yun. I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's going to be neat, and we'll figure this out. So I, I got some tickets to Shen Yun on Friday. So Mandy and I, Friday night, about five o'clock, we got in the car. I dressed up all snazzy like she put on a fancy dress. We went to downtown Norfolk. We stopped in at the Chrysler parking garage right there. We came up and boy, if you could imagine the experience, you get up there, the excitement up there, we're early, we're gonna find a place to eat. And they had a van from a local rock radio station. Nobody's around at that time, but it is. And that's not the horn, that's the music. And it was like, oh, it was, it was bad. And so we got out of there, we walked down the street, and we found this restaurant. Woo! It was like a, a restaurant where you, it's supposedly to take, the atmosphere is where it takes you back into time a little bit. It's like the 1920s, 1930s, and a big piano there. They sat us right there, and we sat down, and it's elegant. It's very, very nice. We looked at the appetizers, and uh, one of the appetizers was a caprese salad. For an appetizer, I ordered the caprese salad to the glory of God the Father. And then they had on the appetizer section there, beets. I couldn't believe it. A fancy restaurant, what, whose idea? Can you imagine the day that they were putting this together? What should we put down as appetizers? And somebody suggests, why don't we put beets? How many like beets? 
there's something wrong with all of you, okay? There's just like, you know, that restaurant's going out of business. It is. It's just something's not. But so we, we ordered the beets. My wife likes beets. And so uh, the beets, they were good. Were they good beets? I even tried one beet. But why you'd ever put it on a restaurant, I don't know. That's another subject for another day. We got, we got done eating. We walked back over to the Chrysler Center. And we got there. And it's about a half hour from the beginning. People are dressed up. We are on the balcony, the top balcony. We taught, walked up there, got some nice seats right in the middle, and they're perfect seats. And, you know, places are very, very packed. Then all of a sudden, things begin, and there's a full orchestra. I mean, the most beautiful music you could imagine. It was marvelous, melodic uh, music. The, the show was a mixture of music, and it was telling the story from their perspective of China before communism. And so the, the show was amazing because in, in some ways it was very traditional. Now the show had a major emphasis on, if you can believe it, modesty. I was amazed at the modesty portrayed to tradition. They, they mentioned several times that they were against the doctrine of evolution. Uh, mentioned over and over against, uh, they were against communism. Uh, they began to uh, have this uh, lady get up and she sang a operatic special. They had a piano they, and began to sing and they showed the words and they had words in it like uh, salvation, heaven, creator, uh, the way. They had another man get up there and he sang a tenor special and he sang and once again it talked about the creator. It talked about different things. But as you watch this, they had little snippets of information and it was Something, it was just weird. It was really amazing, very amazing, but something was weird, weird about it. So at the end of the whole thing, I went and I looked up Shen Yun and began to look at what they were doing. Come to find out, uh, in Ch communist China back in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a whole religion called, well, I won't even mention the religion, it was part Buddhism, part Taoism, and it began to attract millions of people. About 70 million Chinese began to follow it. Communist China began to see that it was happening and they began to canics and actually persecute the religion. The founder of the religion fled to New York. I imagine New York City, but it was upstate New York. He bought a compound of hundreds of acres and a way that they propagate the religion, the way they propagate their uh, their religion that they're trying to teach is they put these Shin Young, uh, Shin Young uh, musical type of things and it goes across the world and it introduces people to their religion. It's a non-profit organization. And the more I began to read it, it, it has part truth. There's part truth. There's so many good things about it, but it's mixed with a whole lot of error. He, they begin to say that we were deity, we were gods that came a long time ago and inhabited the earth. We uh, are re re reincarnated as different beings. And there were so many neat things to, that were close, but it deviated from the truth. And then I began to think about how many people sat in there and didn't see it at all. How many people sat through that and didn't realize what was happening? By the way, I sat through that. I didn't understand it at first, but the farther along you got onto it, they were preaching, if I can say it, preaching heresy. Now, that's not trying to be hard, but it's true. When I mean heresy, they were deviating way away from the word of God. They started with some salvation terms. The way, salvation, heaven, the creator, uh, many things that are very biblical, and then they swayed away from that. By the way, Paul's saying, you may call me what I believe heresy, but I'm sticking to the book. By the way, I want to encourage you. We're Bible-believing people. Somebody will look at you and say, you believe heresy. No, I believe the book. It's true from beginning to end. I'm going to stick with the book, whether you believe it or not, whether society follows it or not. It is the Word of God, which I got ahead of myself. Look back at 14, if you will. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. Now read the rest, the rest of this phrase with me. Believing some things. Okay, no, not some. Believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. He said, hey, I'm, a, I'm not, you can call me a heretic, but I, I'm sticking to all things written in the book. 
Not some of it. I'm sticking to every word of it, every portion of it, every scripture found in the word of God. But it's the truth. You may call it heresy believing the Bible, but it's true. You may call it heresy sticking to the book, but it's true. You may call it heresy believing every jot and tittle of the word of God, but it is the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. By the way, so many verses. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Uh, boy, Mandy and I, we were talking not long ago, and, and there's, there's something that was going on. It just made no sense. Why would you do such a thing? Why would you? And just, it, why? Why? It makes absolutely no sense. Mandy says, don't they know what they're doing? It's destroying. doesn't make any sense. And I say, you're right. But the Bible does tell us the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Do you realize sometimes people do, if I could use the word, maybe it's a hard thing, people do stupid things. <laughs> you haven't, you haven't amen to all service and I say stupid and we amen. I thought it was pretty stupid for me using that stupid word this morning. Uh, but, but sometimes people do things that are that word and you're like, why are you doing it? And they, they don't even know it. They're walking in darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Why? Thy word, when you open this up, it's a lamp unto my feet and a light in my path. This Bible, when you open up, it shows you where you're at. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad. And it shows you where you're going. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Boy, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. By the way, you ever heard the song? I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee because a Sadducee is sad, you see. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I thought a lot more people would know this song. I thought a whole lot more people would know this song. Obviously, I was pretty wrong. <laughs> There's another part to it. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee living a life of heresy. I don't want to be a Pharisee. By the way, I only have one chance at my life. I don't want to live a life deviating from the truth. I want to live a life that's founded on the Word of God. It may not be popular, but the popularity doesn't matter. I want, I want to please God. Boy, in my family, it may not be popular to have a Bible-believing family, a Christian home in today's world, but it doesn't matter what the world thinks or anybody else thinks. I want, I want to uh, live a life and have a family that's not living heresy, but living on the truth. I want a church, by the way, our church, a, a Bible-believing church. I don't want to be a church that's led about with every wind of doctrine, that's filled with so much emotionalism, that's pleasing the world, that's pleasing even Satan. I want a church that pleases the Almighty God. I don't want to have a church and be a part of a church that's living heresy. I want to live a church, be a part of a church that's centered on the Word of God, the King James Bible. And it's important to me. It's very important to you, obviously, too. I got saved in uh, 1994. And I remember hearing the gospel truth about how Jesus saved. And I said, wow, that's great. I've been trusting my works. Jesus is my only hope. Lord, save me. And then I started thinking. I said, well, why are there so many churches out there? By the way, there's a lot of churches, so many different flavors of churches and, you know, things that are different are not the same. Why are these so many different churches? I began to study the Bible and read the Bible. And all of a sudden, you know what I, I realized is the Bible's true. And boy, the Bible gives the answers on how to go to heaven, how to have a Christian home. It gives an answer on every aspect of life, does it not? And I, I wanted to not, I wanted to be like the Bereans. And by the way, I didn't want to make it about me. It's not about me. We don't want to live lives of heresy. We want to live lives of truth. We don't want to live lives of deviating from tr the truth. We want to live lives of the truth. By, by the way, so interesting. As you go back through this story, um, look at verse 21. Look at verse 21. Some call it heresy, but it's the truth. Verse 21, I'm going to read this to you. Except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I'm called into question by you this day. And Paul's response, he led the whole response back to Jesus. By the way, the third and final point this, this morning is the Bible led me to Jesus Christ. When you read the Bible, what a great book. 
It is the book. It's the book of books. It's the word of God. And praise God from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. The whole story leads you to the Messiah. Leads you to Jesus being the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 says it like this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Then it says how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. It says it twice, according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures. He's saying, Paul says, hey, it's written in the book from Genesis all the way to the end. It's in the scriptures. Jesus is the good news. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul was saying the Bible led him to Jesus. The Bible, what a book. Do you remember that story we started this service with, with Jacob D. Shazir? He's, he's over in Japan. He's an atheist. Boy, he's seeing his his infantrymen, the people around him dying from firing squad, from starvation. He gets an opportunity to read the Bible. He has three weeks to read the Bible and he devours that. Takes three weeks, every spare moment of time, he reads the book, the Bible, and it led him. In three weeks, it led him all of a sudden, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. At the end of three weeks, he cries out, Lord, save me. By the way, it changed his life. The Bible led him to Jesus Christ. The Bible changed his life. How about you this morning? Do you want to live a life of heresy? I don't. How many don't want to live a life of heresy? We don't want to live a life of heresy. No, 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 no. Do you even know what heresy is? If you don't know what heresy is, well, I want to encourage you. Read the book. Start reading it. Read it. Study it. Here's another good idea. Come to church faithfully. Maybe a Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And inundate your brain with the Word of God. And when you understand and get the Word of God saturated in your minds and your hearts right there, you'll understand what heresy is. Because heresy is deviating from the truth. How have you been doing, by the way, reading your Bible? Uh, here's, I put this. Can you find the book of Genesis? Can you find the book of Genesis? Please find the book of Genesis. Uh, have you been saved? Boy, this last verse, look at verse 22. This is a sad verse. This is the governor, Felix. And when Felix heard these things, Paul gets done speaking. When Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he heard the truth that way, the way Jesus Christ, Jesus saves. He heard the perfect knowledge, he deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. He deferred them. He said, okay, I heard it. Well, we'll figure this out later. And by the way, the, the last three chapters, chapters 21, 22, 23, getting to 24, took place in about 12 days. Then you skip the next few verses. By the end of this chapter, two years goes by like that. And that's a sad thing because Felix had the truth, the message, the man of God, Paul telling him the truth, and he deferred it. By the way, I don't want to defer the truth. Amen. Well, you have an opportunity today to accept the truth. And we're going to have an invitation in a moment. We're going to pray. And when I do, I want to invite you to do business with God. Maybe your Bible reading has not been what it should be. Well, you could go to God and say, God, forgive me, have mercy on me, but I'm going to, I'm going to pretend I got three weeks like D. Shazir is, I'm gonna get serious about reading the Bible. Well, you do that, I promise you take three weeks, you take a year, and you inundate your life with the word of God, it'll change you in a great way. It will change you. Maybe you've been falling to the pressure of the Jewish people. Maybe you've been falling through the pressure of society, and you, you, know, you don't wanna be associated with the truth, the word of God, because you know the word of God, when you follow the word of God, you look maybe a little bit different than the world today. Well, go to God and say, God, forgive me. It doesn't matter what people think about me. I want to please you. Whatever it is, let's bow our heads right now and let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for a good turnout this morning. What a tremendous amount of people we've had this morning that are interested in your truth. I do believe there's some here that would struggle recognizing what heresy is simply for the fact they don't know the Bible very well. And I pray that you give them the courage to learn it, 
whether it's reading the Bible, studying it, or coming and listening to the preaching of your word more. Help them to make that decision. Gotta pray that you help somebody that's been struggling just with pressure. Boy, they wanna fit in with the world, but we know the friendship of the world is enmity with you, God. And gotta pray that you help them to reject that and don't worry whether people are calling them the heretics. Help them to stick with the Bible. And then, Lord, I pray that maybe there's one or two or three here that don't know you as the way to heaven. And I pray that you'd help them understand their only hope for heaven is you, Jesus. Help them to make decisions today.